Mike Hughes here once again, minister for the Spring Hill Church of Christ, meeting at 405 Butler Street, Spring Hill, Louisiana, with another video Bible sermon. From the Bible we hold dear as the inspired, God-breathed Word that teaches us how to live if we have the hope and desire of going to heaven for our eternal life after we leave this earth. Be sure you download the note card that goes along with this sermon and you can print it out and you can follow along. Fill it in as you follow the sermon. If you like this sermon, want to see more like this, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Also hit the bell notification so you'll be notified when other new content is added to this site. We try to add sermons as often as we can. We'll try to add some Bible question and answers that we've done before in the past. Other things we may be adding to this. If you have questions, leave them in the comments below. If you'd like to follow us on social media, there are links to our social media accounts in the video description below. Now, let's jump into the sermon. The Bible has a lot to say about obedience obeying and being obedient. In 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 22, Peter says, Since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth of the Spirit in sincere love of the brethren, love one another fervently with a pure heart. In Romans chapter 6 and verse 16, the Apostle Paul said, Do you not know that to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey, you are that one slaves whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness. In Acts chapter 5 and verse 29, Peter said we ought to obey God rather than men. In Acts chapter 6 and verse 7, we learn that a great many of the priests were obedient to the faith. In Philemon 21, having confidence in your obedience, Paul said. In Romans chapter 1 and verse 5, through him we have received grace and apostleship, Paul says, for obedience to the faith. So obedience, obeying, and being obedient is very important. The Bible talks about what happens in the consequence without obedience. First of all, without obedience, we can't know God. In 1 John chapter 2 and in verse 3, by this we know that we know Him if we keep His commandments. There's no freedom from sin. In Romans chapter 6 and verse 17, God be thanked that though you were the slaves of sin, yet you have obeyed from the heart, that form of doctrine to which you were delivered, having been set free from sin, you became the slaves of righteousness. In Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 12, says that at a time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. That's what happens when you don't know God. In Romans chapter 6 and verse 23, the wages of sin is death and the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Revelation 21 and 27, we understand that heaven in heaven there will by no means enter anything that defiles or causes an abomination or a lie, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. Your soul is not purified if you don't obey. <clears throat> your soul is not purified if you don't obey. 1 Peter 1 and verse 22, since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit in sincere love of the brethren, love one another fervently with a pure heart. Then the Bible tells us without obedience you can't see life. John 6 and uh, 3 and verse 36, that is John 3 and verse 36, He who believes in the Son has everlasting life. 
He who does not believe in the Son shall not see life. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 13. The wise man said, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep His commandments. This is man's all. 2 Corinthians 10 and verse 5, were to cast down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, were to bring every thought into captivity to obedience of Christ. We know that Christ was obedient. Having been perfected, He became the author of eternal salvation to all who obey Him. In Matthew chapter 7 and verse 21, not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Revelation 22 and verse 14, John the Revelator said, Blessed are those who do his commandments, that they may have a right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. In Hebrews 10 and verse 36, we have need of endurance, he says, so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. We know that the world is passing away, the lust thereof, but he who does the will of the Father abides forever. Mankind as a whole has always been and is still disobedient to God and His will. Peter talks about those who were formerly disobedient when once in the divine long-suffering waited in the days of Noah while the ark was being prepared, but there were few, that's eight souls, that were saved. 1 Peter 3 and verse 20. Paul writes in Romans 10 and verse 21, All day long I have stretched out my hands to a disobedient and a contrary people. Matthew 7, 13. Enter by the narrow gate. Watch this. For wide is the gate, broad is the way which leads to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. 2 Thessalonians 1 and verse 7. To give you who are troubled rest with us, when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with His mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on those. Watch this who do not know God, and those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. What will happen to them? They'll be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and the glory of His power. We understand that he who believes in the Son has everlasting life, but he who does not believe does not see life. Matthew 7 goes on to say, Straight is the gate, narrow is the way, which leads unto life, and few there will be that find it. Matthew 7, verse 22 and 23. Not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord. Many will say, Have we not prophesied in your name? Cast out demons in your name? Done many wonders in your name? He says, Then I will declare to them, I never do you. Depart from me. You might ask the question, Lord, is it I among the disobedient? Paul says in 2 Corinthians 13, 5, that we're to examine ourselves as to whether we're in the faith. Test your own self. Do you not know yourself that Jesus Christ is in you unless indeed, what? You're disqualified. So I want to look in this lesson at five ways one can disobey God. Did you know there are five ways? First of all, we can disobey God by doing that which God has forbidden. God expressly forbids things in the Word of God, and if we do them, we disobey Him. Numbers 22 and verse 18. We find the writer says, If Balak would give me his house full of silver and gold... I cannot go beyond the word of the Lord my God. Can you say that? Numbers 24, 13. I cannot go beyond the commandment of the Lord to do either good or bad of my own mind. We don't make up what we do. God gives us what to do. And if He expressly gives it, 
we're not to disobey. Look at some examples. First example, in the Garden of Eden, God had said in Genesis 1 and verse 26, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. He's to have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every living thing that creeps upon the earth. God formed man out of the dust of the ground, breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Genesis 2.15, God took man, put him in the garden to tend. His job was to tend and keep it. The Lord commanded him, said, Every tree of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. In the day you eat of it, you shall surely die. It's the tree in the center he's talking about. Later on, next verse. God said it wasn't good for man to be alone. I'll make a helper comparable to him. Out of the ground, he had formed every beast of the field, every bird of the air, brought them to Adam. Adam named each one of them, but there was not found for Adam a suitable companion. So God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam. He slept. He took one of his ribs, closed up the flesh in its place, and the, then the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made into a woman, and he brought her to Adam, and Adam said, This is now bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called, Whoa, man! Because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. That's the starting of the family. But then we go over to Genesis chapter 3 and verse 11. We find that after Eve had partaken of the forbidden fruit and gave it to Adam and he took it also, that after Satan had tempted Eve, God comes on the scene asking them where they are. And they had put clothes on and God asked them in verse 11, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree which I commanded you that you should not eat? Now God knew they had eaten of it but he wanted to see if they would come to the lick log and admit it. The man said, the woman whom you gave me, God, I blame it on you. If you hadn't given me that woman, I wouldn't have done it. She gave me of the tree and I ate. Lord said to the woman, what's this you have done? The woman, she's going to blame it on the serpent because the serpent hadn't attempted her. She wouldn't have eaten it. So she says, the serpent deceived me and I ate. So he says to the serpent, because you have done this thing, you are more cursed than all cattle, more than every beast of the field, and you shall go on your belly and shall eat dust all the days of your life. There's going to be enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed. And she shall, he shall bruise your head, you shall bruise his heel. To the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. In pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. And so to Adam, he says, Because you heeded the voice of your wife, and have eaten from the tree which I command you, saying, You shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for your sake. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life, both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth. And you shall eat the herb of the field in the sweat of your face. You shall eat bread till you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken, out of the dust you are, and to dust you shall return. So he drove man out of the garden because of disobedience. Then in man, uh, Genesis chapter 19 and verse 7, we find Lot, uh, nephew of Abraham, had pitched his tent towards Sodom, had become a part of Sodom. And when God set to destroy Sodom for their wickedness, Lot and his family were brought outside of the city. They were told to escape for your life. Do not look back. Don't stay anywhere on the plains. Go all the way to the mountains, lest you be destroyed. But what happened? That's what they were told, clearly told. Lot's wife, she looks back, and when she looks back, she became a pillar of salt. Aaron and his sons, in Numbers 14 and verse 15, 
when they had finished covering the sanctuary and all the furnishings of the sanctuary, when the camp is set to go, the Bible says, the sons of Kohath, they will carry the furnishings, but they shall not touch any holy thing. Here it is, lest they die. These, he says, are things in the tabernacle of meeting which the sons of Kohath are to carry. Notice it has to be of the tribe of Kohath. It has to be his sons, the sons of Kohath, tribe of Levi, sons of Kohath, that are carrying these things. Well, fast forward to 2 Samuel chapter 6 and verse 7. When they came to Achan's threshing floor, Uz had put out his hand on the ark and took hold of it. And for the oxen it stumbled. So the anger of the Lord was aroused against Uzzah. God struck him for his error and he died. Somebody might say, well, that's not fair. He was just trying to steady that thing. What God said, God said, if you touch it, you die. So you disobey God, you die. God means what He says and He says what He means. In Romans chapter 5 and verse 12, Therefore, just as through one man... Sin entered the world, and death through sin, thus death spread to all men, because all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. In 2 Corinthians 15, 22, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. He'll be with us. Hebrews chapter 2 and in verse 13, in verse 1, we must give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard lest we drift away now for if the word of angels word spoken through angels rather proved steadfast every transgression and disobedience received a just reward how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation we won't so there are thou shalt nots also in the new testament if you disobey these then you will also be condemned. He says in Colossians 2, verse 21, Do not touch, do not taste, do not handle, which all concern things which perish with using according to the commandments and doctrines of men. Don't do according to the commandments and doctrines of men. Do not love the world, neither the things that are in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. All that's in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. The world passes away and the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. Then we have a listing of the works of the flesh in Galatians chapter 5, and verse 19 through 21. That we're not to practice these things. He gives the list. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambition, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries. And he says, the like, he said, of which I told you beforehand, just as I also told you in times past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Won't inherit these things. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25, we're told not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. And the matter of some is. Exhort one another so much the more you see the day approaching. We're not to sin willfully. On the first day of the week, disciples came together to break bread. Paul, ready to depart the next day, spoke to them and continued his message till midnight. We don't know what time he started, but we know his message went till midnight. So it's very important that we obey God. 2 Corinthians 11 and verse 20. For you put up with it if one brings you into bondage. We're not to be brought into bondage. If one devours you, if one takes from you, if one exalts himself, if one strikes you on the face. So that's one way to disobey God. Second way to disobey We love Him, we'll keep His commandments. Jesus said, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word. 1 John 5 and verse 3 we see that His commandments are not grievous. In Revelation 22 and verse 14, blessed are those who do His commandments. So we're not to go onward. We're not to, we're, 
to abide, we're not, we're not not to abide, double negative there, but we're to abide in Christ. Whoever goes onwards and abides not, he says, whoever transgresses and does not abide in the doctrine of Christ does not have God. He who abides in the doctrine of Christ has both the Father and the Son. We know in 2 Samuel 15, Samuel, Saul was told to go and smite the Amalekite, utterly destroy them, verse 3. Verse 9, we see that he spared Agag and the best of the sheep. And then we see in verse 13, Saul says, Blessed are you of the Lord. I have, watch this, performed the commandment of the Lord. Verse 14, what? Samuel asked him, What is the bleeding of the sheep in my ear? The sheep are over there hollering, Liar, liar. As he was saying that, bleeding of the sheep proved that he was lying. The lowing of the oxen, he says, which I hear. So he hadn't obeyed the commandment of the Lord. God's commandment for salvation for the alien sinner is to believe the gospel. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Acts chapter 16, verse 31. Repent of our sins. The time of this ignorance God overlooked. Now commands all men everywhere to repent. To confess with the mouth and believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead and you will be saved. Matthew 6, verse 33. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. We find on the first day of the week, disciples came together to break bread. We're not to forsake the assembling of ourselves. These are things we're not to do. We're to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that our labor is not in vain in the Lord. Our delight is to be in the law of the Lord. We're to meditate in it. Samuel 1 and verse, uh, Psalm 1 and verse 2. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 17, we're to pray without ceasing. Paul said in 2 Timothy 4 16, at my first defense, no one stood with me, but all, was, all forsook me. May it not be charged against you. Pure religion, undefiled before God the Father is this, to visit the orphans and widows in their troubles and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. To obey in part is the same as no obedience. We saw that in 1 Samuel chapter 15 and uh, with Saul. And we see in Luke 17 and verse 32 to remember Lot's wife when it comes to this. We're to give the more earnest heed to the things that we've heard. We're to teach them to observe all things I have commanded you. And Jesus said, Lo, I'm with you all the way, even to the end of the age. He who believes in the Son has everlasting life. He who does not believe in the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. Number three, we can disobey God by adding to what God has commanded. In Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 2, Moses said, You shall not add to the word which I command you, nor take from it, that you may keep the commandments of the Lord which your God, which I command you. Try that again. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 2, the Bible says, You shall not add to the word, of God, word which I command you, nor take from it that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you. In Revelation 22 and verse 18, I testify to everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book, if anyone adds to these things, God will add to him the plagues that are written in this book. Now notice the next part of that. If anyone takes away from the commands of this book, then God will add the plagues to him as well. So adding to and taking from are two ways that we can disobey the commands of God. In Genesis 2 and verse 17, 
They were told, but of the tree of knowledge, good and evil, you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat, you shall surely die. The serpent added to that by saying, you shall not surely die. In John chapter 8 and verse 44, Jesus said of the devil that he is the father of lies. In 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 10, we're to be more diligent to make our call and election sure. In Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 12, we're to beware lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. To add to is to depart. To say we can't fall is going against and adding to what the Bible says. Adding mechanical instrument of music and worship is also adding to the Word of God. Colossians chapter 3 and in verse 16, Let the Word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Human organizations, adding human organizations to do the work of the church is adding to the Word of God. To Him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. In 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 5, we're kept by the power of God through faith for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. To add recreation and entertainment to our worship is adding to the Word of God. But then there are those who are guilty of taking away from the Word of God. To say you can be saved by faith only apart from being baptized is taking away from what the Word says. The Bible tells us, Jesus said in Mark 16, 15, and 16, Go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. To take baptism out of it is to take away from the Word of God because He says, He who does not believe will be condemned. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 6. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything, but faith, by itself, no, faith working through love. Faith coupled with works. We see God is spirit. They that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Not just in the spirit, but truth also. To take away from what is true would be adding to the Word of God. Then we see we disobey God not only by adding to or taking away from the Word, but number five, by substituting something else for what God has commanded. Genesis chapter 4. We find offerings offered by Cain and Abel. We find that Cain offered the fruit of the ground. Abel offered firstlings from his flocks. In Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 4, we're told by faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he attained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and through it, being dead, still speaks. We see that faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. In Leviticus chapter 16, they were told, the priests were told to go get the fire to take a censer full of burning coals from the fire from the altar before the Lord <clears throat> with his hands full of sweet incense beaten fine and bring it inside the veil. There's the command. Nadab and Abihu thought fire was fire. So the Bible says the sons of Aaron took a censer and put fire in it, put incense on it, and offered profane fire. That is, they did not get the fire from where the Lord told them. They might have reasoned, fire is fire. What's the difference in fire? It all looks the same. But God had not commanded them to take any fire. So because of that, fire went out from the Lord 
and devoured them. Same way if we say baptisms any other way than immersion. In Romans chapter 6, verse 3 and 4, do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ were baptized into His death? Involves immersion. We were buried with Him through baptism into death that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even the soul, we should also walk in newness of life. The Ethiopian eunuch going down into the water rules out sprinkling or pouring for baptism. Fruit of the vine on the Lord's Supper table. We know that the Bible says fruit of the vine. That would rule out anything else. That would rule out Coke and pie. That would rule out tomato juice because that is not what is commanded. What is commanded is fruit of the vine. We're told on the first day of the week the disciples came together to break bread. Any other time by the first, than the first day of the week would be going against what God commanded. 1 Corinthians 16, 1 and 2 Concerning the collection for the saints, I've given church orders to the churches of Galatia. He said, you do the same. On the first day of the week, let each of you lay something inside, storing up as he may prosper, that there be no collections when I come. To give on any other day than the first day of the week would be substituting something for what God has commanded. So the five ways. One, by doing that which God has forbidden. Two, failing to do what God has commanded. And three, adding to what God has commanded. Four, taking away from what God has commanded. And number five, substituting something else for what God has commanded. You might say, is it Lord, is it I among the disobedient? Am I doing things this way? Am I doing what God for, for has forbidden? Am I failing to do what God has commanded? And am I adding to or taking from what God has commanded? Or am I substituting? Hope you've been edified by this Bible sermon. If you haven't downloaded already, download the note card that goes along with this sermon. If you would like to follow us on social media, there are also links in the video description below for our social media sites. If you have any questions, leave them in the content comment section below. If you like the sermon, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Ring the bell to get notifications. Also, watch this video that YouTube suggests for you. And also we have a suggested channel of some of our brethren who are also have sermons and other Bible class material on YouTube, a good place to get content like this, to study it, to help you learn and grow in a study of God's Word. If you ever feel depressed and down, remember, airplanes take off against the wind every day. Keep reaching for the stars hoping heaven will be your home one day, live in such a way that that will happen, and keep your Bibles open, keep your head in the Word of God, studying the Word of God each and every day. Once again, my name is Mike Hughes, and we'll see you again on the next video.